Hello Year 11s. So where are we in the Edexcel course? So we are right at the bottom here. We've looked at quantitative analysis before um, the holiday. We have looked at bulk and surface properties of matter and nanoparticles. Um, we've looked at composites, um, how we choose different materials. And today we are focusing on our very final topic. Woohoo! Uh, nano particles. So that's your heading for today. Uh, we're going to write down nanoparticles and um, I, you don't need to copy every single note but I will explain to you what you need to copy. Okay so nanoparticles. This is a, an area of science that's pretty new known as nanoscience and it deals with these nanoparticles. And these are particles that are very very small. They're particles consisting of only a few hundred atoms and their size is measured in nanoparticles in nanometers hence the name nanoparticles so what is a nanometer a nanometer is one times 10 to the minus nine times smaller than a meter and we know that nanoparticles are anywhere between one nanometer and a hundred nanometer in diameter so what I'd like you to do is copy this down and then work out how big a hundred nanometer is in meters. And once you've done that, purple pen your answer. Okay, how did you get on? So a hundred nanometers is a hundred times 10 to the minus nine. A hundred is the same as 10 to the two times 10 to the minus 9, and from your excellent mathematics, that gives us 1 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Okay. Now, let's kind of look at another example. A silver atom, atom, is a sphere with a diameter of 0 0.3 nanometers. A silver nanoparticle is a sphere with a diameter of 90 nanometers. And my question here is calculate how many times larger the silver nanoparticle is compared to a silver atom. So copy down this example, show you're working, and then purple pen your answer. Okay, so if you want to know how many times larger it is, you take the bigger number divided by the smaller number, and it gives you an answer of 300. So it's 300 times, the silver nanoparticle is 300 times bigger than the silver atom. Okay, here's a slightly different question. A silver nanoparticle is a sphere with a diameter of 90 nanometers. A silver atom is a sphere with a diameter of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Calculate how many times larger the silver nanoparticle is compared to an oxygen atom. An opportunity for them to use some of your math skills and test them in your exam. So copy this example as a work example and purple pen your answer when you're ready. Okay, so it's all about doing a couple of version uh, conversions. Uh, then what I need to do is I need to divide the biggest by the smallest and it gives me an answer of 7.5 times 10 to the 2. So a diameter of a silver nanoparticle is 7.5 times 10 to the 2 or 750 times greater than the diameter of an oxygen atom. Okay, there aren't any too many other versions they can ask this question so if you can master this example you will be great. Now, where, are, where nanoparticles really come into their own is the fact that they have a very large surface area to volume ratio. This is one of the key reasons why we like to work with nanoparticles. So, if I have a big piece of material like that big square, it's got a relatively small surface area to volume ratio. Remember, as we've spoken about in biology, very often if something's big, 
it's got a small surface area by um, by comparison and the same happens over here we spoke about this when we looked at rates of reaction the smaller the particles the smaller the powder is crushed the larger the surface area so it says that if the same piece of material is broken up into much smaller pieces the total volume is the same the total surface area is much larger because you can now get into all those bits that were hidden inside the square and this is because the smaller pieces have a much higher surface to volume ratio pause the video and copy these notes really important that you remember this property of nanoparticles okay let's look at an, an example over here we've got a cuboid now what i'd like you to do using that information is i'd like you to calculate the surface area to volume ratio so first you've got to calculate the surface area remember there's six sides and then you've got to calculate the volume and then you look at the ratio when you are ready purple pen your answer okay so volume is length times width times height so we've got four times two times three giving us an answer of 24 nanometers cubed do not forget your units and then surface area is going to come to 52 nanometers squared remember it's a cuboid rather than a cube so you've got to do your calculations carefully and then your surface area to volume ratio you divide the 52 divided by 24 gives you an answer of 2.17 okay yeah we've got a big bulk material that's been broken up into smaller pieces and each has sides of one nanometer calculate the surface area to volume ratio of each cube okay so this one you've got your surface area you've got your volume nice and easy this time round, and six to one so your surface area to volume ratio is six so it gets much bigger okay. right now we need to know what some of the uses some of the applications of nanoparticles are i'm going to go through them and then when i'm done I pause the video and make some notes the first one is as catalysts because we know that um, catalysts help to speed up a chemical reaction now the catalysts themselves they can have this extra um, feature by having a um, high surface area to volume ratio that would mean that there's both surface area and the fact that it's a catalyst helping to speed up the reaction another use is in so actually one of the huge advantages of that is actually you need to use very very little to get the right effect another application is in medicine nanomedicine so they can use tiny particles to deliver like the fullerene on the diagram over here that we learned about when we were looking at um, allotropes of carbon what they could do is they could put a drug inside that fullerene and making it easier to move in the body and it says their tiny particles could aid in that drug delivery by making the medicines easier to absorb into the body and targeting them to the tissues where they are needed so a lovely way of getting it around the body we can also make very 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 tiny circuits um, for computer chips using nanoparticles which conduct electricity in the cosmetic industry um, nanoparticles can improve the absorption of moisturizers and also add uv protection to makeup um, so we'll, we'll talk about sunscreens more in a moment and they also have like silver nanoparticles have antibacterial properties so they can be added into things like surgical masks plasters wound dressings and what they will do is they will help to kill any bacteria that lands on the surface now you've got to be aware that there are some issues with nanoparticles and these include that we don't know 
the long-term impacts of these nanoparticles in our body. There hasn't been enough research done. Um, and also the other effect is, the other problem is we don't know what the effect is on the environment. So all our sunscreen that's landing up in the sea, we don't know the impact of those nanoparticles um, in the sea. Um, so it is important that products containing nanoparticles are named so that people can make a choice whether they want to use it or not. So the nanoparticles in sunscreen give you better coverage of, of protection, um, but we don't know um, how much of that is actually getting absorbed into the bodies. So there is um, very positive sides, but I think people just need to be um, aware um, about the, the possible implications that we do not yet know. Okay, now that is the key things you need to know. So you've learned about what is a nanoparticle, you've learned about how they have a very large surface area to volume ratio, and you've learned about a variety of applications of nanoparticles. Once you've got all your notes down, in Show My Homework, there is a quiz for you to do. Excellent work. Next lesson, we will um, do some past paper questions on um, these uh, last topics. And then on Wednesday, on Friday, we will have a, uh, a live Zoom lesson. Take care.